Hello world, Shelly here, and today is part three of my three-part series on key strategies for looking and feeling your best on Zoom. So far, we have covered leveling up your tech, we have covered looking your Zoom best, and today we are going to cover mastering Zoom etiquette. If you are one of those people who has found themselves thrown into this world of video conferencing, remote working, Zoom calls, this is the place for you. If you feel like your videos just haven't been so hot and you would like to feel better about how they look, we are going to go through part three today, mastering Zoom etiquette. I will link the other parts for you down below if you missed them. And let's get into this, shall we? Today I'm going to give you my five tips for mastering Zoom etiquette. The fourth one I didn't even think of until I suffered through a Zoom meeting with somebody violating this tip. So stick around for that one, but let's get back to the beginning. So these tips work whether you're talking about Zoom, WebEx, Skype, FaceTime, any kind of video conferencing software where you are on a computer or a laptop, etc. Now, tip number one mute your microphone when you're not speaking. This actually has a technological reason behind it. Most of these video conferencing software apps don't handle multiple streams of sound input very well. And if you've got ambient noise coming from one person, it might detect that ambient noise as the person who's supposed to be the active speaker. And a lot of these apps will switch between the active speaker based on the noise that it's hearing. And that can be really distracting, especially if you're not the active speaker and it keeps drawing its attention to you. So in order for people to be able to hear more clearly overall and to avoid disrupting that focus of the active speaker, it is best to mute your microphone while you are not speaking. That way you're not generating any ambient noise. It's also one of those things where when you're unmuted, if you're shuffling papers or if you're typing or texting, people can hear that. And you just don't want to come across as the person who's not paying attention, right? Even if you're not paying attention, you want to appear that you're paying attention. I've mastered the art of appearing like I'm paying attention. So generally, if you mute yourself, you're not going to be distracting people with those sounds and you're not going to come across as if you're not paying attention because they won't be able to hear what you're doing outside of the video frame. Tip number two, turn off any sources of ambient noise. That is TVs or radios in the background. That is dogs barking, you know, pets running around. My YouTube videos are notoriously terrible at this as I often have cats in the background. But this also is turn off the notifications on your computer if you are using that computer for a Zoom meeting. Turn off your cell phone notifications, silence your phone, that kind of thing. It just makes it a lot easier for Zoom to pick up your voice and that way when people hear you speak, they will hear you much more clearly. This could also go so far as if you've got your house windows open and you live nearby a fire station, for example, that has a lot of fire trucks going by with lights and sirens and things. Okay, the lights they might not hear, but they'll hear the sirens. I used to live next to a firehouse and it would have been terrible in the Zoom era because it was all the time. So close your windows, silence anything that you have control over and it'll make your Zoom audio sound a whole lot better. Tip number three, speak one at a time. This is so much easier said than done. Think about it. If you're having a conversation with somebody, it is so natural to you know, laugh at the end of someone else's sentence or start talking or have your agreement words overlapping their speech. It's so normal in a typical conversation. These are not typical conversations. And this all goes back to the fact that the technology of these video conferencing calls doesn't really handle overlapping audio very well. So if you laugh on top of the end of somebody else's sentence, or you start talking in agreement before you start saying your point, but you're overlapping the end of their sentence, it really gets muffled and 
the software has a really hard time distinguishing what is going on. It sounds so simple, but it really is hard to get used to. One of the things you can do to help you get used to it is start to build pauses into your speaking so that at least if someone else is not consciously trying to do this, you are creating a pause where they could laugh, for example, and Zoom won't get confused. It will only have one person's audio to deal with at a time. It takes a ton of practice and it feels really unnatural, but eventually you do get used to it. And then you'll just kind of have the way you talk on Zoom versus the way you talk the rest of your life. It, it becomes an odd sense of normal once you've done it for a while. Tip number four. Oh my goodness, this one will drive you crazy if you suffer from someone else violating it, which is how I came across thinking about this tip. Here it is. Keep your hair, your collar, your beard away from your microphone. Now, depends what kind of mic you've got. If you have a lapel mic that's on your shirt, holy cow, if your hair is moving against it every time you turn your head, everyone else is just gonna hear and it's terrible. Same with a beard. If you've got a really long beard and a lapel mic, if you have a headset and it's got a microphone that comes out to the front, make sure your hair is away from it. Make sure your collar isn't touching it. That sound of clothing or your hair or beard touching the microphone, it's like nails on a chalkboard for some people. And it will be a horrible experience for other people if you are the one causing that. If someone else is causing it, my recommendation is just ask them maybe in the private chat or just really quickly jump in and say, could you get your hair away from your mic? It's so unsettling. It is just that sound. Oh my goodness. No, oh, don't let that, don't be that guy. Don't let that happen to you. My fifth and final tip is minimize distractions. We have talked about this a few times already because it's so important. You wanna minimize distractions in your background, have a nice, plain, simple background, minimize distractions in the noise you're making, minimize your ambient noise distractions, Min you know, all of this really comes down to being a good steward of Zoom. Be the person who doesn't cause distraction. Be the person who looks fully engaged and really into the meeting, even if you're not. It just looks better if you are. There are easy little tips that we have gone over that can help you look like you are engaged, look like you're ready to go, look like you're paying attention and focused on the viewer and the speaker. And it's just, maybe it's a matter of appearances if you really don't feel like paying attention. And that's fine too. Just don't be the distraction. Don't be the one that's that's causing the, the voyeurism, reality TV, people are wondering what you're wearing or what's going on in the background or what that noise is. And you know, just don't be the distraction. There you have it. Those are my five tips for mastering Zoom etiquette part of the three-part series on looking and feeling your best on Zoom. Remember, level up your tech, dress your Zoom best, master your etiquette, and you are going to be on your way to being one of the superstars in your Zoom meetings. Of course, you already are. You know that, right? You know you already are the superstar. But if you wanna level up how you look, those are my suggestions for how to do it. I will have these five tips for mastering etiquette linked if you would like to sign up for a free downloadable little cheat sheet that you can print out and give yourself some reminders for your next video conference or Zoom meeting. If you enjoy these kinds of sort of helpful tech tips, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over geeking out with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.